Thursday early evening uh, from Finland as well. Uh, I'm I'm Kalle Niranen and I represent the ALD equipment company uh, Benek. Uh, the talk here will will focus on uh, industrial production of barrier coatings by ALD. And to go straight to the problem at hand that we would like to solve is maybe most of us have, have some sort of first-hand experience of, of environmental effects on our electronical devices. And of course, there are many ways to uh, for, for our devices to fail, but um, I would say moisture still remains one uh, prominent root cause for that. And for example, in the OLED industry, uh, it's absolutely critical um, to have good moisture barrier uh, coatings. Um, specifically, then, when once uh, many electrical components are assembled on, on printed circuit boards called PCBAs, um, there are some specific issues, such as there might be sensitive components um, that need extra protection, or then um, you would like to prevent <coughs> corrosion, of course, or, or then, uh, as they now include tin, um, there is a growth of tin that you would like to inhibit. We call this tin whiskers. And in the medical field, uh, they say uh, prevention is better than the cure. So it would be only logical um, to prevent uh, your devices from um, from exposure to the environment. And in this regard, why not try AOD? As we, we hopefully know, AOD can provide dielectric films which are very dense. Um, they are conformal, um, so they will go anywhere on the coated part. Um, and on the right, there's a kind of uh, application driven chart um, showing that what applications require which type of barrier properties. And, and we see that uh, the trend is that the higher barrier quality starts to require AOD. And um, in an industrial setting, AOD is also a feasible solution because it's a scalable deposition technique and it's also you can make it very cost effective. And all of these targets um, to improve the reliability and lifetime of the device. Um, of course, it's not a novel idea to, to coat your electronics in order to protect them. And in fact, in the PCBA industry, uh, specifically, they use the term conformal coating, um, which to them means uh, a thin polymeric film. Now, once they say thin, they mean multiple tens of micrometers, which is quite thick for AOD people. And um, even researchers who study ways um, to protect the PCBs, they sometimes omit AOD. So on the right here, you see a comparison chart um, by researchers and and I've now added AOD into this chart here um, to kind of give a fair comparison. This is stemming just from our experience of coding um, electronics. And while AOD is not a perfect solution by itself, um, you can always combine AOD with other methods. For example, combination with Parallel uh, gives you very high barrier quality plus very high abrasion resistance. So it's kind of a best of both worlds situation right there. Um, and if you wanted to go deeper into that comparison, you would, you know, you, you, you could take a look at what the thickness required for Perlene would be and what it would be for AOD and what sort of barrier quality you would be looking at with that coding thickness. And the outcome is, is that AOD provides a billion times better barrier. Hey. Um, moving on to industrial production, more of the practice of doing the AOD um, on such um, devices. We have found uh, when we do this that it's typically a stepwise process. Um, first, you would like to prove that AOD works. So, uh, on the device. So it, it improves the lifetime, it solves the issues that the other coding methods might have. So there are specific constraints at this stage. Does it handle the vacuum that the AOD would take place in? Does it handle temperatures that would provide good quality films and so on? Um, 
After that, you would be looking at scaling the process. So once you have good results, then you, you start commercializing a little bit. So you look at the tolerances, what is allowed. Um, you would optimize the process time. You would optimize the loading time even. And all of this would lead into you know, decreased cost per piece. And finally, you would enter a production mode, which means uh, uh, doing continuous production, of course, but uh, you can do it with your own tool. So you purchase an AOD tool from the vendor, or then you outsource the production to someone who already uh, has the capability of providing the coatings for you. And of course, with AOD, there are some considerations with the facility or handling chemicals. Um, what quality functions do we, do we um, measure and so on? Um, choosing the equipment, of course, is largely dictated by what the size of the coded object is um, and also what your projected volume is. So here are two examples of um, production equipment, thermal batch AOD tools um, that we offer. And to understand the scale of things, I've included an engineer for scale. So. Um, the person in blue is, is operating a P800 reactor in our clean room facilities. Um, and that is kind of the reactor uh, that goes into the AOD tool and the shelves can then be filled with the products. Um, and as you see the dimensions here, then we can co code objects that are larger than one meter, for example. Uh, the video is highly recommended if you want to see kind of the practical uh, way of handling such big uh, reaction chambers. Uh, and when we do the batch coding, we of course want to preserve uh, the good features of AOD, for example, delivering high uniformity so that uh, uh, there are there is a little variance between the products that are coded. And, and here's an example of 25 pieces of uh, 200 millimeter wafers, and we see that the variance between um, the samples is really small. Okay, um, so uh, uh, an example case, so we've, we've seen the steps and, and some of the kind of theory behind this. Uh, this is an example customer case of how the road to, to production goes. So we start with a small amount of PCs uh, for PCBAs and uh, and we look at what constraints are there. We find the maximum temperature and the parameters where the coding can be done. Initially, in this case, there were many areas that, that required masking. They contact areas typically, and um, so it's a bit of handiwork at that stage. But the results were very good, uh, and it solved a problem that was there. Um, so we, we went to the next step, and in this step, we implemented customized holders so that we can maximize the amount of pieces that we're coding. Um, we adopted some quality control measures and, and agreed on what we are tracking. We increased the batch size uh, by a factor of 100. And then also there's, there's the possibility of um, designing for AOD so that the, this masking work becomes much easier so that, um, okay, so to the, kind of the product is optimized for AOD production. Um, and then finally, in this case, the customer decided that they would like to outsource the production to us. Um, we had a production plan from the customer, seeing the volumes and the projections, um, work conducted here. We have clean, clean room facilities for that, uh, and the production uh, is, is ISO certified. And if they come up with ideas on how to improve or we come up with ideas on how to improve, uh, then, then together we can agree and, and bring the cost down even more. Um, practically speaking, this is now a bit more optimized for production here. Uh, as you see, the PCBs are loaded on a shelf and it's very easy to mask the contact areas now as you just need a long strip of tape this is just captain tape. It works fine. Uh, you mask the contact areas and you load them in the reactor on the right. So you can batch code uh, multiple layers, which again are composed of these PCBAs. And tracking the production quality 
So once you, once you run this process over time, of course, you want to be sure that you're delivering good quality. So one way to do that is, is statistical process control. And here's actual data from, from last year where we did PCBA codings, uh, codings for PCBAs. Um, here with our thermal batch ALD tool, uh, this is over 100 runs each. Uh, data point here is the average thickness in a coding run. And if you have been exposed to uh, quality metrics, then you know that this result 1.79 here means that the process when it's running, it's between five and six sigma, which is an excellent result. So ALD is very repeatable and it uh, adheres to kind of normal standardized uh, production uh, control measures. Um, a little bit about Benek. So uh, hopefully you know that Benek is an AOD tool supplier. Of course, we provide services as well. Uh, we are headquartered here in Finland and we operate a, a an AOD plant. So with multiple AOD tools for production and for, for demonstration. Um, and just from the history of Benek, uh, we have accumulated over 30 years of experience of doing actual industrial production with ALD. And we are able to service customers all the way, um, as you saw the steps before. So uh, proving that the ALD can help in, in, in building a solution, then of course scaling up that solution into a, a feasible industrial scale and also to bring the cost down to a level that is acceptable uh, and then of course supplying the equipment if the customer wants to have their own tool or then doing the production here in-house uh, with our production tools. So in our services uh, what we call development service is usually the first steps is, is finding the solution and then uh, optimizing that solution and the coding service part is um, the production part. And uh, uh, for the equipment that we offer, uh, all the way from entry-level R2 tools um, to, to batch, thermal batch AOD tools, the P400A and the P800, um, to semi-certified cluster AOD tools, the uh, transform series. Okay, uh, 